and welcome to E-Magazine. I'm your host, Brenda Nyamichaba. Now, the global luxury goods industry is worth more than 1.5 trillion US dollars, and this market is expected to grow by up to 5% annually over the next few years. Now, the luxury industry depends on a robust consumer market and continued growth of high income class. Now, Sub-Saharan Africa is an upcoming and significant luxury market whose growth is being driven by capital flows. Kenya is one of the most prominent African countries right now with a fast-growing task for luxury drinks, which has in turn driven demand for fine drinks from the global market. This has allowed space for international brands such as Hennessy to break into the Kenyan market. Now, last week, I got the chance to have a sit-down with Hennessy representatives where we talked about Hennessy's presence in the Kenyan market and why exactly this drink continues to gain so much popularity in the Kenyan entertainment scene. Now, let's take a look at how that went down. deliver when it comes to luxury because we're talking about over 200 years of history and we're talking about you know, so there's the tradition and there's the quality the excellence yeah i love this because simply holding it makes me feel powerful i actually started drinking this because of a rapper called young ma i love hennessy because it's very rich it's very flavorful and i think i like it also because it's a brand that's known i mean kenyans africans and brands you know yeah for me, when I think about a drink that I love, I like to think about it from a point of there's a science of making the drink, right? And then the art of making the drink. So science and art come together to create a great product, which is what Hennessy is. So I tried it out and I love it. Big up to Hennessy. To maintain the quality over 200 years. And then of course, um, how versatile it is. So I just want you to tell me about the plans for Hennessy um, in Kenya right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, from uh, a business perspective, uh, Kenya and East Africa have been identified as an incredibly uh, exciting market for Hennessy. So we want to prioritise access to, uh, to stocks. Mm -hmm. uh, we also want to work closely with, uh, with Kenya to make sure we've got the right plan for, uh, for uh, sustainable growth over mm -hmm. the next five years. Okay. So we want to um, continue to uh, capitalise on the great work we're doing in the, the Night mm -hmm. Channel but also do more work with uh, bars and bartenders, which right, is why we're right. here uh, today. Well, it's great you mentioned bars, because I was just wanted you to tell me some of the strategies you put in place to continue making Hennessy popular in the Kenyan market. Sure. Well, number one is, is going to be training. So that's the, that's the foundation. So we need to engage bartenders, make sure that we're training them uh, not just on cocktails, but also the Hennessy brand and the versatility of the brand, the history. Um, and then uh, you're working on uh, engagement programs. So we don't want to just come in, yeah. do some trainings, and then uh, come back in six months' time. That's not what we're about. We want to work closely with the local teams to make sure that we're putting in uh, exciting activations in venues uh, so that uh, the, through the bartenders, we can actually engage consumers and get consumers to really start to associate Hennessy and cocktails uh, and that's how we're, we're planning on building momentum. Okay, that's amazing. And what exactly makes Hennessy stand out as a luxury brand in the Kenyan market right now? Uh, well, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's versatility, uh, so it's, uh, it's incredibly adaptable uh, and it's loved by such a, a wide uh, <laughs> selection of, uh, of consumers uh, and it's consumed differently by a lot of people as well. So it's not, we're not just relying on one 
type of consumer for the for the growth of Hennessy. Uh, you have people drinking it, uh, you know, neat. Uh, you have people drinking it with dinner. People drinking it in clubs, in bars. Uh, it's uh, the passion for Hennessy is uh, it's something we, we don't know exactly where it comes from, but we love it and we we don't take it for granted and we want to keep on uh, maintaining. So. Wonderful. Now, for a fact, Hennessy has been. Um, in, I mean, it's been in the market for a minute, and right now you're just trying to make it more popular and get sales in, especially in the African market. Yeah. But one thing I just wanted to know is, what do you think Hennis is going to be in the next five years? Uh, in the next five years, but can I just say one thing first? Yes. You mentioned that Hennessy's Hennessy. been here for a minute. Yes, we've, uh, yes. we've actually been here for a long... 19... 1898. 1898. So first shipments uh, we've tracked to, uh, to Kenya specifically, back yes. to 1898. So we've been around for a long time. So we're not a new kid on the block, mm -hmm. just come on the scene in the last 10 years. Uh, so we've been working hard since then to, to build a foundation in, uh, in Kenya. The next five years for us is, is all about, uh, well, as I say, engagement, making sure that we're not... Uh, we're not setting strategy from Cognac in France and expecting it to work in, uh, in Kenya. Uh, you're the expert, of, you know, Kenyans are the experts of what's happening in Kenya. So we, we open up dialogue, we work out what's working and we invest accordingly. Uh, so we want to be uh, continually pushing how Cognac is consumed uh, and uh, we're working very closely with our incredibly strong local teams. They're going to be the key to, to success for Hennessy. Now, you know, I just want to talk more about Hennessy and you just uh, explain to me what Hennessy stands for as a brand. Hennessy has been existing for more than two and two centuries. Uh, it's been existing uh, since uh, 1765. Mm -hmm. It's all about crafting the future, meaning a, s a combination of savoir-faire mm -hmm. and being really uh, in the trend, being okay. really uh, in the uh, culture mm -hmm. of, uh, of people. Oh. And regarding culture, despite the fact it is a global brand, what is important for us as a company is to be really relevant from a cultural and local standpoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we don't do the same campaigns, we don't have the same products across, across regions. Mm -hmm. This is not the same in China, in the US and in Africa. It's different. Yes, because wow. we want to be relevant culturally. This okay. is important to us. And Kenya is important for us because this is the third African market. Mm -hmm. And Africa is really key for us. This is a strategic continent we want to invest in. And Kenya being really the third market of this continent, we really want to invest and we strongly believe. In Kenya. In, in Kenya. So is, yes. is that one of the major reasons why you chose Kenya to be that third African market to penetrate in? Yes, I mean it's a key market. Of, <laughs> it's the key Great. market of East Africa. Okay. So that's the reason why mm -hmm. we, we have, for instance, developed a um, campaign, media campaign, mm -hmm. with, uh, including um, a Kenyan artist, okay. uh, Mutua, the photograph. Wow. Uh, it's really uh, to be relevant from a cultural standpoint. Okay, that's amazing. I'm happy you brought up the campaigns yeah. you've been working on because another question I had was that do you believe this has kind of put Hennessy out there and helped it, its brand grow further in Kenya? Uh, hopefully, I mean this, the brand is really mm -hmm. strong there. You have really built and welcomed us mm -hmm. and uh, and the campaign will, he will help for sure. Okay. It will help uh, the awareness which is already strong but it will help in uh, in uh, building the brand in, uh, in create more link between consumers, okay. Kenyan consumers and, and us uh, as, a, as a brand. Okay and another thing I wanted to look at is you know obviously Kenya is a very competitive market. It is. And we have a lot of local spirits um, in that space and I just wanted to ask do you feel that this local alcohol brands in Kenya have kind of raised a friction when it comes to brands such as Hennessy coming mm -hmm. into the market and mm -hmm. obviously Hennessy is from a global market. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, as I was saying, mm -hmm. despite the fact we are global, we, we, we have a lo local activations. Okay. And com to answer your point regarding competition, we think there is room for everyone. Okay. That um, 
it's more it's more bringing value to the market to give consumer choices of consum consumption because mm -hmm. you can have different moments mm -hmm. of consumptions different brands that you prefer at a certain moment of of the day okay. um, for us, what is important is that you consume uh, Hennessy with a smile. Great. So whatever you want, however you want, or neat, or on ice, or in cocktails, mm -hmm. or just mixed, is however you want. Okay. Uh, what is important is that you enjoy. Kenyan market has really accepted Hennessy. Yeah. And uh, the partnerships you've been doing with the creative campaigns are clearly very much working. But I just wanted to know, are there other future partnership plans Hennessy has uh, in store? In fact, um, you know this campaign, this African campaign, yes. has inspired the entire world. Because in Asia, they are asking the same, saying, wow, this is so relevant, this is so clever. The way you, you put the light on the new generation, which is changing the things, uh, we would like to do the same. So in Europe, so Africa is really inspiring mm -hmm. the world, I would say, in a way, for okay. us as a brand. That's amazing. So what you're doing in Kenya is uh, kind of inspiring the whole world yeah. uh, when it comes to it. So that's amazing. Now I just want to uh, wrap our conversation by just trying to understand um, any future plans, not just in Kenya, but yeah. East Africa as well. Does Hennessy have any future plans? for the East African market as a whole? Yes, of course, we do. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, we work with the most important accounts, venue. Mm -hmm. um, you've got amazing venues here. Okay, yeah. And uh, so we do partnerships with them mm -hmm. uh, so that we, we will continue to invest uh, in communication uh, through billboards, TV, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Mm -hmm. And from a Pan African uh, standpoint, okay. we will keep on investing um, with African artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so more to come in the in the future. I can't disclose anything, but uh, it's for sure that we will keep uh, developing partnership with uh, with African. Uh, okay. Artists. Okay, thank you, Miss Patricia. Um, I've noticed you mentioned that you know Kenya has amazing venues. Yeah. Yes, and is that one of the major things that have helped Hennessy grow in Kenya? The the venues here, the clubs, or of course, of mm -hmm. course, uh, we won't be there without uh, this accounts, uh, this uh, dedication uh, for the brand, uh, mm -hmm. the the fact that it has been really put in light. Um, for sure, I mean, uh, okay, it, okay. without without you, without uh, Kenyan people and, uh -huh. and Kenyan love for for Hennessy, nothing would have been possible. All right, great, thank you so much for You're making welcome. time. Merci beaucoup. Merci. And that's it. We actually done. Those are the few questions. Now, as you can clearly see from that clip, I had such an amazing time um, attending this Hennessy event and talking to this representative because I learned so much about Hennessy in the market right now. Now we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to jump right into the real talk and talk about the trending movies or trending series right now. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. It's time for Real Talk where we take a look at the trending movies or the trending TV series right now. And today we're going to take a look at some of the TV shows everyone's watching right now and also talk about the ratings just to see if they're doing as well. Now to start us off, we're going to take a look at Dead to Me as our best review for the TV shows.
Well, that right there was a dead to me, which honestly is a personal favorite because I'm currently watching it right now. Now, on to me to me to score, a uh, dead to me got 78%, which clearly shows it's performing really well, and audience score at 95%, which means a lot of people are enjoying watching this film. Now, dead to me is based on two females who end up being friends through the most weirdest circumstances, and one of them holds a major secret that might just mess up their lives as well as their friendship. Now, I just want to read some reviews that people have said. Um, based on Dead to Me and one of them is Dead to Me is a terrific character study of two women with an extremely complicated relationship and also like that show is one of the best and most unpredictable series on television this season. Now you can clearly see there's a lot of positive remarks best based on Dead to Me so if you haven't watched it this is something you should definitely um, watch. Now we're going to move on to the next um, TV series that made it on our list which is Good Girls. Now Good Girls from season one has been amazing it has a lot of hype and a lot of people have been really excited to know that good girls season two is out and i'm going to take a look at a trailer of that right now before we get into more details about its review That right there was Good Girls, which is very popular right now um, all around the world. It's a TV series that's interesting, a lot of drama. And clearly you can see on the Tomato Meter score, it's quite 100%, meaning it's super popular. People love this show and season two is out, so it makes it so much better. Now, audience score was 95%. And out of the TV series that we chose on our list today, Good Girls made like the best on the list. Now we're going to move on to the next um, um, TV show that made it on the list which is Big Little Lies Season 2. Now let's take a look at the trailer.
Yes, Big Little Lies. When this TV show came out, a lot of people didn't understand the plot behind it because it was based on a novel. But once you watched episode one and two, you got hooked on that show and you had to binge watch it. Binge watch it. Now, um, for the Tomato Meter score, Big Little Lies scored 98%, as you can clearly see, which is a good percentage. And audience score hasn't come out yet because season two just came out this month. So we're still waiting to see what people think about this particular film. Now, I'm just going to read one of the reviews um, from you know audience watchers. And one of them says, the misery of beautiful people continues to be a moral as well as aesthetic pleasure as Big Little Lies continues its second series. Now, these are the series that made it on a top list um, for The Real Talk today. They're very interesting. They're clearly, as you can see from the percentages, they're doing well. So you don't have anything to watch. Do pick one from the list. And do let me know what you think about them on our social media platforms at Metropole TV KE. As for now, it's a goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in on E! Magazine. Make sure you stick around on Metropole TV because there's a lot in store for you. As for now, goodbye.